Hello everyone, welcome again to this session and this is Vincent Obita and today we are going to cover uh, one of the easiest uh, silent stations for OSCE scale and this is the Braden scale. Yes, the Braden scale. Most people fear Braden scale but it's one of the easiest actually in OSCE. Uh, Braden scale is the easiest session that anyone would ever wish to have. So for Braden scale, what you need to know is with the eight minutes you are provided with, have your first two minutes to ensure you've recorded the vulnerable areas of uh, pressure area care and also the signs and symptoms of uh, uh, pressure ulcer development. And this is very easy. For the, for the most vulnerable areas, ensure you take note of, just start down there. You take care of the heels, the toes, yeah. Uh, get into the hips, yeah. Uh, the gluteal area, that's the buttocks. We have the sacrum, okay. Uh, we have the spine, we have the shoulder, okay. We have the occiput, we have the temporal region of the skull. Uh, and with that one already you've captured around uh, eight which is the minimum you should be able to provide you can add the the ear and um, and uh, also uh, the elbows uh, the elbows and that will have covered all of them that one you can capture very fast then you move very fast and write uh, again the signs and symptoms of uh, uh, pressure ulcer development have your five localized areas that is the local localized edema which goes with localized in duration localized heat which goes with localized coolness in case of uh, tissue death uh, necrosis then we have um, localized publish areas with the five localized you will only re remain with the blisters and persistent erythema and uh, actually you've met you've already met the target that uh, is expected in OSCE things of uh, of uh, non-blanching hyperemia and things of that kind can just be added but with the five localized blisters uh, blisters and discoloration you are good to go because that's already seven now the remaining six minutes you will go and handle your uh, your Braden scenario and one one tip to use in this case go through the entire scenario very fast yeah so I've developed a scenario here uh, that we are going to do together okay and another thing uh, you need to take note that the scenario in Oske is very direct actually they just lived uh, the wording from the from the scale itself and they place it there so with that one it's even much easier for you so you should never be worried so i have here a case by of a patient by the name patel patel was brought in in accident and emergency unit following an accident is able to communicate but exhibit some some confusion he had had multiple fractures and is not able to move out of bed. He is able to take all his meals with snacks in between. He needs assistance of two carers to be able to position self uh, when he is laid uh, down the bed. Uh, and with the use of bedpan and urinals, he is able to keep himself dry and needs changing only at uh, uh, routine intervals. Uh, then the last bit is able to move all other non-affected limbs freely. With all this in mind, now you will go back and handle and score your patient using the Braden scale to determine if your patient is at risk of uh, developing pressure ulcer. So one thing that I also need to reassure you that in OSCE, the scenario won't provide you with these aspects in order. Like we have sensory perception, moisture, activity, mobility, nutrition, friction, and shear. They won't be provided in order. In order. So it's upon you to determine the aspect that is being covered 
and recording it uh, accordingly. So for this case, I have a patient. Uh, Patel was brought in an accident and emergency following an accident. He's able to communicate, okay, uh, but exhibit some confusion. That's an aspect of sensory perception. And uh, we have completely limited, very limited, slightly limited, no impairment. So no impairment is for someone who is able to express themselves. And in this case, we are told he has some confusion. So I'll state that Patel has slight, slightly limited sensory perception. He's not able to communicate fully. So I'll give Patel a three, okay? And uh, a three. Then oh, the next statement, so you go with the statement provided in your scenario. He had multiple fractures and is not able to move out of bed. So this is a patient who is bedridden and this would be under the aspect of activity and that is bed first. So for uh, this patient is uh, confined in bed. So I'll put under activity that is bed first, that is one. And remember we've skipped moist, moisture as I told you they won't be in order. Uh, then the next statement is he is able to take all his meal, meals with snacks in between. This somebody is uh, having no issues with their meals and actually they are having additional meal. So in terms of nutrition, I'll state that it is excellent. Eats most of every meal and never refuses a meal. Okay, so I'll give uh, Patel a four. Okay. Uh, uh, and again, uh, the next bit is he needs assistance of two carers to be able to position self uh, after sliding. So this would be related to friction and shear. So is the problem is uh, the patient having problem with friction and shear? Potential problem or no apparent problem? So for the problem, he requires moderate to maximum assistance in moving. Potential problem moves moves feebly or requires minimum assistance. Here, someone is requiring two carers. He needs uh, maximum assistance or moderate to maximum. So I'll give that one a problem. He's having a problem with friction and shear. Then the next bit is, uh, oh, with the use of bedpan and urinals, he's able to keep himself dry and needs changing uh, only at routine end of intervals. This will come under the aspect of moisture, whether the linen are usually moist. And uh, we have the aspect of constantly moist, very moist, occasionally moist, rarely moist. So here we are told he's able to keep himself dry. To mean this person is rarely moist. And if we read the content about rarely moist, it's stating skin is usually dry and linen only requires changing at routine intervals, which meets the exact aspect for this patient. So I'll give him a uh, four uh, in this case, rarely moist. Then the last bit is he's able to move other non-affected limbs freely. Remember, this patient is having fractures, but the unfractured bits is able to move them freely. That will come under mobility. So completely mobile, very limited, slightly limited, no limitation. Remember, this is in relation to the muscle power and things of that kind. So uh, since he's moving the unaffected limbs freely, I'm opting that he is not having any limitation in terms of mobility. The other aspects are affected due to the fracture, but he's able to move freely. And this usually comes like uh, assess for patients who are maybe unconscious if you uh, they are not able to move their limbs and things of, of that kind. And this somebody is able to take a meal and make major movements within uh, with the wide range of motion. So I'll put that one under no limitation, which is states thus, makes major and frequent changes in position uh, without assistance or independently. And that's what exactly fits Patel. With all that put in place, give 
your total and uh, i have a three a four that's seven then one that's eight for the activity and for mobility is four that's a total of 12 for the nutrition is four that is 16 and for the friction is one that is 17 so my total score is 17 and remember I have to give that total score. If you are supposed to write the date here, then write the date of your examination date, which is today. Uh, today we are having 13th of November. So with that one, I'm able to get my total. There's even nothing to worry because you need not to be worried whether uh, either it's moderate, severe, or uh, mild risk. In re There's nothing to worry about because what is expected of you is just scoring and giving the total, which is very direct. Now, after doing that one, you will have now the time to counter check and also confirm maybe if you miss something. And with that one, you need to be very, very fast uh, because uh, time is ever limited but by that time you would have already gotten your total score and you will be uh, you will already have passed okay so don't fear Braden is very, is the easiest is one of the easiest scales in Oscar and one thing that should encourage you is that they usually lift the content from this Braden scale to the scenario okay you need only to make some few changes or uh, take note of some few aspect or traits that might come uh, along with it okay with that one you will be able uh, and you will be good to go thank you so much for watching the video uh, continue passing your eyes uh, i mean your oscar and welcome to band 5 for the team who are passing i'm delighted with a good number who are really giving uh, their best and uh, joining the band 5 in getting their pins so with that one bye for now and uh, remember to subscribe to my channel search obita vincent on youtube and you will be able to get more information concerning Oscar skills, Oscar station, and everything pertaining your registration after uh, registration for your UK registered nurse pin. Thank you so much and bye for now. Have a good night and let's meet in the next session as I'll be covering other new aspects of the Oscar station. Bye for now. Have a lovely night.